Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this is a discussion about DevOps tunnels. Is this a light or a train? This is based on our experience and how RackN is working to create portable, reusable automation. But it's based out of our stories, our history of working in the trenches, helping companies build automation and the challenges around it. As a founder of RackN, I go back over 20 years building infrastructure and automation for cloud data centers. And that gives me and RackN a unique perspective in the challenges of building repeatable, reusable automation. So let's talk through this from the lens of how we first experienced DevOps. About 10 years ago, I was in DevOps Days Austin, and we had this idea that we were going to print tchotchkes from the booth. Part of this was not preparing and ordering anything in advance, and part of it was the cool factor of being able to actually dynamically print whatever people wanted when they walked up to the booth. And it should have been magical. We would literally turn out whatever people were asking for. But what we found out in trying to set that up was that the 3D printer, especially in a booth, required a lot of hand-holding and tuning. Each print was unique, and it was expensive and hard to iterate. We'd often get partway through and find out that we had to restart. And ultimately, we printed two items total over a three-day period. And it really woke me up to the challenges of 3D printing. I'm not saying that 3D printing isn't useful and workable. We're going to talk about that. But there's times when you can 3D print effectively, and there's times when you really just want to hand out a tchotchke at a booth and have a conversation with some somebody. Simultaneous to that booth experience, we've been having a very similar uh, challenge at Dell, where, where we were trying to ship OpenStack and Hadoop clusters right out of the factory. And we would show up with a rack of servers. Uh, my illustration here shows one of our engineers actually riding in a plane alongside the server rack and uh, being able to deliver it. And you'll see that we had exactly the same challenges with our rack of pre-configured servers as we did with our 3D printer. Each site was unique. The differences between the sites made it impossible for us to create a repeatable pattern. As a matter of fact, once we got something right, it would change in the next site. And if we had fixed it, we could never go back and help the other customers. As a matter of fact, one of our biggest frustrations wasn't whether or not we could automate a single site. We were getting pretty good at that. Our big frustration was that as we got better at doing the work, as we fixed bugs and made, and made improvements, we couldn't go help the previous customers that we had just finished because nothing about the automation was reusable or portable or standardized. That also meant that when we got 15 or 20 or 30 customers in the future, every single one of them was going to be unique and different. That problem isn't something that was unique to us. We were shipping standard servers to standard racks with standard wiring using pretty standard software, but yet nothing fit together. At the time we were using Chef, uh, and so we had good tools. Today we have some great tools. And we had good people, right? The, the operators in these sites knew what they were doing. They knew their infrastructure really well. And the vendors that we had, the hardware, the software, the cloud vendors we have today, all are excellent. But none of it works together, which means that every time we build something, it ends up being unique to the customer, to the site, to the team. We have teams at the same company that are doing similar work, but in different ways. And they can't actually collaborate and get reuse across teams within the same company where you would hope we'd have high degree of reuse. I like to think of that as the same challenge we have in building and construction that we've eliminated over time. Imagine if you would that you were building a house and the electricians working in the bedrooms were working with US plugs and wiring. That the and electricians working in the living areas were using European plugs and the electricians working in the kitchen were just attaching things together with wire nuts and trying to make it up as they went, just connecting things however they wanted. I, that is very much what IT feels like today. It's like dealing with all these crafts and trades without any standard and governance and uh, repeatable process. 
And that leads to significant challenges. We end up with teams doing whatever they want and then having to support each other. It's one of the reasons why we have such problems scaling infrastructure and we have security issues and compliance challenges and cost overruns. The more and more standardization like we have in building where there's codes and components that just fit together and work together in expected ways moves us into a much more repeatable pattern for building automation. That's ultimately what we consider infrastructure as code. It's having this code-like experience, this productized experience brought into our automation and operations environments. If I go back to our 3D molding analogy, we can actually think of this as a 3D printing versus injection molding uh, challenge. Because if you think about what these two systems do, they are fundamentally the same thing. They both take raw plastic, they melt it, and then they form it into shapes. And that is literally exactly the same thing. You can have a 3D printer in an injection molding machine make exactly the same part from the same materials. But yet, the experience of these two environments is remarkably different. So what's so different about these two systems? For a 3D printer, we have a low system cost. You can buy a 3D printer for almost nothing, uh, hundreds of dollars. The setup cost is relatively short. You can start printing uh, as soon as you get a design and, and feed in a coil. But the cost per part, the reliability, and the speed of the device is significantly limited. Whereas an injection molding machine, a very expensive piece of high precision equipment that requires specialized plastic that is uh, hard to acquire and hard to store, has a high system setup cost. But once you have the mold and the machine, the ability to produce hundreds of thousands of parts cheaply is very high. That's high reliability and incredibly fast. So we have systems that do the same thing, but are very different from an industrial perspective and very different use cases. So when we look at these 3D printers, they're great for this experimenting phase where we need fast iterations or when we have one-off components that we're not going to do a whole bunch of work with. And that's really important at certain phases in a life cycle. But the challenge is we get minimally reusable parts, minimally reusable processes. While we can send somebody a design across the planet, it could take them quite a bit of time to reproduce exactly the systems that you're making. And if you were trying to create hundreds of parts, the repeatability of all those parts, the accuracy of all those parts, if you have a hundred machines making parts at the same time, it's going to be pretty low. Whereas if you have injection molding machines, they are very long-term stable. You build a mold and use it for years or decades. It's great for high volume production where you need a lot of the same thing and where you need reusable components. That mold could be used in any number of injection molding machines. And so we've standardized how all these pieces fit together, which is great, but it can be very difficult to adjust an injection molding machine if you need to change the parts. And that is the balance between these two systems. But I would ask you to think about this. When we're automating something, we want to develop in a highly iterative place where we can do experiments and learn and test. But once we've done it, once that automation works, then we want to operate in the injection molding business. We want our automation to be incredibly reliable, fast, high precision. We want our automated code, the things that we're actually building, to have all the attributes of the injection molding machine. We don't want to be building automation and using it in production. That we have to be constantly twink tinkering and modifying and babysitting and watching. All of the things that make it hard to do injection molding um, on a 3D printer at scale are exactly the things that we seem to be stuck with as we build infrastructure as code automation. We seem to be caught in a trap where we have built our development infrastructure and then made it impossible to transition into production infrastructure for the automation that we write. And this is one of the big differences between development and software and the way most operations work today. We are very good in development of going from this development test to production where we have very repeatable results.
But when we actually write the automation to run those systems, we are not as good at that. We typically keep using the 3D printer over and over and over again instead of switching into injection molding mode where we really want things to work. So the ideal aspect here is to blend these two systems together to be able to have a development experience for automation that's like 3D printing and a run experience for our automation that is much more like injection molding and actually have those things work together. The challenge is you, you don't want an injection molding machine to produce the end result, raw plastic end result. What we want to think about here is something where we're using injection molding components but more chained together. In this case, we're thinking about it like an, an infrastructure pipeline, where we're taking the repeatable components and then hooking them together. And this is frankly what we do in, in industry. You don't injection mold all of the parts or even one part. What you do is you build the pieces and then you design them to fit together. That, that interconnected pipeline of operations, which is exactly like what we do for development with CICD, is also what we need to be thinking about for infrastructure as code. That way we can build our automation out of scalable and reusable components, chain them together, and get a reliable outcome. Now, if you're thinking about this, it obviously will not simply scale to take standard components and hook them together. You need to have a process where we can still inject new and specialized behaviors where we can literally go through and add into our process the injection um, of injection molding machines a 3d printer where we can come in and say you know what my behavior the thing i need is different than the standard components that's where you want to have this 3d printed model so that you can add in something specialized something different or low volume where you can do that work and then add it back into the pipeline the key here is to think about it as a pipeline because that ensures that we are always trying to use the repeatable standardized components, even if we have to add or inject an additional customized piece. The way this works in something that we've been doing at RackN is that we have a uh, very complex VMware install process. That in VMware install pipeline is completely standardized. It works for all of our customers and is reused over and over and over again. It's an injection molding machine for the process. And we can couple that to a hardware install, inventory, uh, discovery, uh, decommissioning, teardown, cleanup, basically connect standard workflows together to create a pipeline. But no customer uses components from that pipeline without some adjustment or modification. And so what we've done is have known places where we can inject the specialized components into that workflow. And that allows each site to use the standard industrialized components alongside with the specialized pieces, the custom attributes that they need for their own site, literally allowing you to mix and match the standard pieces with the custom pieces. But we go a step further, and it's important to think about how you want to take those custom pieces. Because ultimately, we're talking about infrastructure as code. And that means that we can take the bespoke automation, that specialized infrastructure, and turn it into standardized automation. Ideally, if it's standardized automation that everybody can use, you want it to go become part of the overall machinery of the pipeline, to become its own injection molding machine, and allow it to be put back in so that everybody can get the benefit of it. So we can reduce the toil of building bespoke automation per site and actually connect it in and reuse it. The benefits of that are amazing because literally the more people share and reuse automation components, the more resilient and robust those components are. We literally reduce the toil of our industry, of our companies, as we collaborate on these, com these pieces and then wire them together. Now, that doesn't mean that everything that you build is going to become a standard component, but it does mean that we can start sharing and reusing them. Even if you're one team in a company and you can share across your team because your company has a standard process, that standardization benefits everybody. And even more importantly, a process by which things can become standardized is a critical component to how we think about infrastructure as code, infrastructure as code platforms. And I can't emphasize this enough. Your infrastructure as code platform, your automation platform, needs to have ways in which bespoke custom automation 
comes into a standardized process and becomes a reusable component. If we're not converging around the automation itself, then we're actually missing out on a big part of the collaboration. So this is where we really start thinking about how automation teams and platforms support infrastructure as code reuse. When you're building automation, you should be thinking as you're building it, how do I make sure that what I'm building is reused, is sustainable for other teams in my organization or other companies who want to use this product? And think about how the module could be used for every customer, how it could be used for on-prem edge and cloud. There's no reason that those infrastructure types should be treated as different extremes. They're actually very similar with some adjustments needed to take advantage of the benefits that you have in each environment. And the same is true across time. Day zero, day one, and day n can all reuse, should all reuse the same automation. The fact that we could combine those things is dramatically powerful. It means that we aren't writing automation that is different from provisioning to day two operations patch and update. We actually should be converging all of these things into standard reusable components. I hope this has sparked some rethinking in how you're building automation, in what it takes when you go through and look at the systems that you've built, the way you've automated it, and think about if you have built 3D printed designs or injection molding designs, ones that can be resilient and shared. Because I can promise you, your automation should be able to stand up to high use, resiliency, and sharing. Because when you do that, it means you're also able to take advantage of other people's highly resilient reusable components, put them together in a system, and build overall end-to-end -end business value with your automation. Thank you. I hope this was helpful. We get very passionate and excited, as you can tell, about infrastructure as code and reusable automation. Uh, it really is something that we work very closely with our customers to do and build. And I hope that you will check this out. Try out our product, Digital Rebar. It epitomizes exactly the type of thinking that I've been talking about here. And we want you to participate and collaborate with us in building this type of reusable automation. Get it working for you, but also let's make it work for everybody. Thank you. Check us out at rackend.com.